Yeah, you can all see the slides. Yep. Cool. Great. Yep. Um, yeah. So first question was why is it important? So I will start with that just to show uh, the uh, improvements that we made uh, with the changes to our caching strategy. So I think uh, we did the changes uh, like one year and a half now ago. Um, so yeah, with this new caching strategy, uh, so we reduced the individual jobs duration by from like from one to 20 minutes in some cases. Um, and for pipelines uh, duration, it was between six and 20 minutes. So that was quite uh, quite a lot um, given our, our goals at the time. Uh, we also reduced an approximate $3,000 um, of CI machines per month. And I don't recall any uh, cash related problems after that, um, or at least we haven't, have, uh, we haven't had uh, um, a lot, that's for sure. Um, so now about the strategy itself, so um, the goal with this new strategy was to make it very simple, like uh, not have a lot of uh, cases for, for you know, like um, when should we um, purge or, you know, update the caches, what should be the cache keys? Um, because as you all know, that's one of the hardest problem is to find a cache keys and to and to like to find uh, yeah to basically know when to purge caches. Um, so basically, the the important steps for this strategy is that um, so we are following the best uh, practices that we that are defined in the GitLab docs. Um, so the first point is that every job should be able to pass without any cache um, or even with an outdated cache. Um, so that means that caches are only there to speed up jobs, but that they are not there to make sure that jobs pass. Um, uh, otherwise, that's that's a bug. Um, the second important item uh, regarding performance is that all jobs must only pull from the cache and never uh, push. And this is just to avoid unnecessary uploads of caches that would that in most cases are identical. So that's just a waste of time and, and bandwidth, basically, if you do that. Um, and that's like pull, pull push. So pu pulling and pushing from into the cache is the default behavior. So uh, you need to change that. Um, and the goal of cache um, is to avoid like, reinstalling dependencies every time. So Ruby gems, nodes, uh, and Go packages. Um, but if you if you look at the first point, and uh, that also means that the job still must still like run the install uh, dependencies comments um, because the cache could be empty or outdated. Um, and so, yeah, that, so on this, that works well for these um, package uh, managers because they handle outdated dependencies. So for instance, if you have a merge request where you update a gems version and the cache as the previous version of the gem, um, then it's it's fine. It would just like um, use the gems that don't change from the cache and only install the the new gem. So that's really efficient. Um, about the cache keys, um, we really took the simple way of having fixed cache keys um, because um, to, yeah, that allows all pipelines to use the same cache. Uh, we do that because um, there's no, like it's related to the point above, like if a, a, a gems or a, a package in general is updated, then uh, it would just install the missing one. So it's totally fine to not start from scratch if you only update one um, dependency. Um, 
And yeah, that allows to limit the number of caches. Um, so the number of combinations, basically. Uh, so instead of having one cache per like an one cache per branch, but like, and we don't have only one cache, we have uh, maybe 10 um, different caches. So that would, you know, uh, multiply 10 by number of branches. So that would be a, a waste of uh, storage. Um, and yeah, about the updates of the caches, since we don't update in, in jobs uh, in general, we only perform the update every two hours in, in our regular scheduled pipeline. Um, um, so two hourly scheduled pipelines. And in these jobs, we just, um, we don't even pull the current caches. We just start from scratch, just so that we don't have to care about any like cleaning any outdated dependencies so that's really simple so i've put the link to the magic quest that implemented this um so we are using the multiple cache feature which uh was quite recent i think it was implemented uh, like introduced this year um and it allows to have atomic caches uh, really specific to like we have the Ruby cache, we have the nodes cache, and then you can define a cache that would um, combine these two, um, and that's also reduce the uh, the number of jobs we need to update the caches. Um, so that's that was a great improvement as well, um, and I've listed just two specific caches definition. Um, so there's the Gitali binaries cache, which is which the key is based on the content of the Gitali server version file. And this is because this cache um, stores the Gitali binaries that, that are built uh, in the setup test env job. And it's just simpler to rebuild these binaries when this file changes because the binaries are dependent on this file um, rather than you know like compare the version um, the binaries version with the with the file. Um, and given that this version doesn't change very often, it's fine. And the second specific one is the assets cache, um, which includes um, compiled front-end assets. And it also includes a specific assets hash, uh, the uh, txt file, which is the hash of these assets. And this is, this is just an optimization so that we don't have to rebuild, to recompile the assets if the, the hash uh, of the files uh, is the same as in the, the master cache, basically. So this is just two specific cases that are a bit different than our usual um, strategy but that that works well um, and yeah i think that's mostly it for our caching strategy uh, so anyways, if anyone has questions uh, i think there is an issue as well uh, catch for fork because uh, for now, suppose there's uh, someone fork the project and create their own merge request, and that branch will use their own cache, and there's nothing. So, and they, if they don't put, they don't try to update cache with labels or merge request title and mm -hmm. never touch their default branches, then there will be no cache for their merge request forever. So I'm wondering if how how we can improve this default forking and sending merge request experience. Yeah. Yeah, so good point. Um, I think ideally, ideally that, that should be possible to like, I mean, in the GitLab product, it would be great to be able to allow folks to use the, you know, the canonical cache. But yeah. um, 
there's probably some security issues with that but i think that would be yeah ideal um because yeah our strategy doesn't really work for folks in that sense um except if yeah folks define the schedule pipeline to update the caches i guess yeah can we specify where to fetch the cache <laughs> i don't know if this makes sense at all but <laughs> yeah i don't think that's possible at the moment okay I'll put the issues in the engine. Okay. That was great. Thanks, Remy. Um, are the, do we graph? Um, this is probably a, an ignorant question. I apologize. Do we graph the the times like where you we had the on the first or the one of the early slides the improvements? Um, do we have that charted somewhere so you, we can see the the point at which they like the, the benefits started to, to come in? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we do, um, we do graph. So I'm sharing just a, a GitLab uh, issue, but the graphs that you see are from SciSense. Um, and yeah, so I can actually, yeah, I, I won't, show you right now because i need to log in and stuff but yeah we graph all that so we graph uh, as you can see the like per uh, um, pipeline type um, so for example this one is for the uh, qa pipeline type so these are the pipelines that run the packaging qa job um, this one is from the front end pipeline type which uh, which um, deployed the review apps and this one is from the code pipeline type. So mostly like backend pipeline, uh, we could say. Um, and we also graph per job. And this is useful to uh, detect. Um, so per jobs look like this, for example. This is useful to detect regressions uh, usually. Um, and it's also useful when we have improvements <laughs> for sure. It'd be, I'm sure I'm not the first person to mention this. It'd be awesome to have these sorts of like mini, mini versions of these uh, graphs kind of embedded as part of the like pipeline view um, because it's, mm -hmm. I mean, the data is there, but it's perhaps not, not, not close enough um, to be able to, to be rendered inside the kind of the GitLab interface, but that'd be so cool to, to be able to see that like the regression side is, is as interesting and fascinating as the improvement like performance side. Yeah. Totally agree, and uh, I think we, uh, if you recall, we discussed that a few weeks ago in the team meeting because we had a regression in the um, in the setup test and or yeah, I think it was this one, um, and and I actually created a, you know a feature proposal to to detect that at the merge request stage. Uh, rather than looking at the graphs uh, after the merge request is merged. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it's great. Thanks. And, and um, I'll say like testing, well, different teams in Verify are looking at uh, pipeline intelligence, I think is what they're calling it. So like analytics to support those, that, those sort of insights so that um, customers can kind of, can have more nudges and reminders around their CI minute usage um, when it might be changed, trends may be changing, good or bad, you know, whether, whether things are improving or um, getting worse. So I'll have to dig up those issues. And like Remy said, he created an issue for that specific thing. Cool. Remy, that was great. Um, any final questions? Thank you. That was really, really useful. I will share the presentation as well.